My name is uh, Dan. I'm an internal medicine resident. I'm going to be moderating the panel today, the, the webinar. And we're joined today by an incredible guest, Kate Jackson from the um, double AMC. And as you all know, the double AMC is the Association of American Medical Colleges. Um, Kate is a senior communications and outreach specialist and has an excellent presentation prepared for you guys. And it's going to be interactive. So she's going to be answering questions in the chat while the video plays. And then after the video is done, with all of the explanation of resources and all of the incredible things that the double AMC has to offer, um, we'll be doing additional questions as well. So there is the Q&A section at the bottom, if you all see it on the webinar. You guys could ask questions in that Q&A, ask those questions there. And while the video plays, Kate is going to be answering your questions directly. Um, and then afterwards, like I mentioned, I'll be directly talking with them out loud with Kate. Um, so Kate, I want to open the floor up to you, allow you to introduce yourself, and then we can get started. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Dan. Um, so my name is Kate Jackson. As you said, I work at the Association of American Medical Colleges as a senior communications and outreach specialist. Um, I am here to guide you on your pre-med journey. I, I um, primarily work on the preview uh, team, which is the professional readiness exam, but I am here to answer your questions. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Thank you. Awesome. So we can go ahead and get started with the video. And remember, place your questions in the Q&A as the video is going. Kate will be answering your questions directly by typing in the chat in the Q&A portion. And then afterwards, we'll, we'll do additional Q&A. So keep those questions coming. We got almost 500 questions before this started, and we'll try to go through some of those after the video is done. But keep on asking those questions. And we can get started with the video, Kate. Great. Welcome to Designing Your Pre-Med Journey with resources from the Association of American Medical Colleges. This presentation will cover some of the tools and resources available through the AAMC on your journey to medical school. We'll cover information about the MCAT exam, applying to medical school with the AMCAS program, financing your medical education, and much more. As you go through this presentation, write down any questions you have and feel free to send them our way via the information found on the slide at the end of the presentation. If you haven't heard of the AAMC or are unsure of what we do, we're a nonprofit organization that focuses on transforming healthcare in four primary mission areas, medical education, patient care, medical research, and diversity, inclusion, and equity in healthcare. Our mission is to lead and serve academic medicine to improve the health of people everywhere. The AAMC works through many different avenues to support and facilitate medical education. And one of those ways we do that is by providing services and tools for pre-medical students, medical students, and residents. Here, you'll see the pathway to medical school, but you should know there isn't a certain timeline or order to complete these requirements. On the next slide, you'll see everyone's path is different. The reality is that your path may take different twists and turns along the way. Remember, there isn't a right or wrong path to medical school. Everyone's path to medical school is unique and however you get there is just right. Here is your hub for this presentation and all the resources we'll cover. We'll cover everything from getting experience to preparing for the MCAT exam, choosing your medical schools and applying. But remember, there isn't a certain timeline or order that you have to complete requirements. To get started, work with your pre-health or academic advisor to develop an academic program that meets your pre-medical and other school specific degree requirements. If you don't have a pre-health advisor, the National Association of Advisors for the Health Professions, also called the NAAHP, can connect you with one. To start your journey, 
we recommend signing up for the AAMC Pre-Med Navigator newsletter. This monthly newsletter provides information about important topics, resources, tips, and key dates for aspiring physicians. To view all of the past articles and to subscribe, visit aamc.org backslash pre-med navigator. Hear directly from students through our aspiring docs resource. Here, you'll find information and inspiration to help you get started on your path to medicine. There are fact sheets, resource articles, and inspiring stories. The fact sheets are one of the most popular resources because they provide quick but thorough information about topics like shadowing a doctor, preparing for the MCAT exam, making the most of your gap year, and what it's like to see a patient for the first time. All of these resources can be found at aamc.org backslash aspiring docs. The Aspiring Docs blog features over 300 firsthand stories from pre-meds, medical students, and residents. You can search for posts by author, topic, or level of experience. Also, we're always accepting new writers. Writing for the blog is a great way to inspire others, as well as demonstrate one of the 17 pre-med competencies, written communication. Email us at aspiringdocs at aamc.org to learn more. In addition to your GPA and test scores, a lot of medical schools are progressing to competency-based admissions. This means that they evaluate you based on your experiences, goals, and proficiency in the 17 core competencies listed here that demonstrate your preparedness for medical school. Many applicants wonder, what is a competency and how do we demonstrate it? After hearing those questions from applicants and pre-health advisors, we created the Anatomy of an Applicant website. It defines these 17 core competencies that medical schools look for in applicants and gives you tools and examples for how to develop competencies. On the next slide, you'll learn more about the anatomy of an applicant resources. To show how successful applicants have demonstrated these competencies, we've interviewed real medical students, their pre-health advisors, and the admission officers who accepted them. On the anatomy of an applicant website, you're able to read stories from medical students and how they demonstrated the core competencies during their path to medicine and in their medical school applications. You'll also get the perspective of their pre-health advisors and the admissions officers who accepted them. You'll also find information about the parts of an application and you can complete a workbook with self-assessment worksheets which help you identify your competencies. To access, simply navigate to aamc.org backslash competencies. To be a competitive applicant, some have questioned if it's necessary to shadow a doctor. It's true that shadowing is a great experience as it exposes you to patient care in a clinical setting and gives you an idea of the day-to-day -day demands of a medical career. While shadowing may offer you exposure to the patient care environment, it's not the only way to demonstrate these skills and attributes. Here are a few other ways that you can gain medically related experience. Hosted at 12 universities across the US, students are provided with academic enrichment in the basic sciences and math, clinical experiences, career development activities, learning and study skills seminars, and financial planning. SHPEP offers students a variety of fun and enriching academic and career experiences. Many students recognize the importance of gaining practical experience in the health field through volunteer work, shadowing, lab work, or working as a medical scribe. If you are searching for a program that prepares you for health profession schools, 
check out the Summer Health Professions Education Program, better known as SHPEP. This free program has strengthened students' academic proficiency and career development for over 30 years. Funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, SHPEP is a free six-week transformative program for college freshmen and sophomore students. The program provides opportunities to explore a variety of health careers, including dentistry, medicine, nursing, optometry, pharmacy, physical therapy, and public health. Furthermore, the program prepares scholars for successful applications to health profession schools. Over 65% of SHPEP scholars who apply to medical or dental school are accepted and over 78% of them obtain advanced degrees demonstrating the success of this program. Students who have strong interest in the health professions and are freshmen or sophomores in college are eligible for this program. In addition to being a US citizen, permanent resident, or someone with Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, DACA status, potential applicants must have 60 college credits or fewer and a GPA of at least 2.5. During the application process, a personal statement and one recommendation letter are also required. Visit shpep.org for more information and to apply. Here are a few other ways that you can gain medically related experience. And remember, you can always find other summer enrichment opportunities by visiting services.aamc.org backslash summer programs. When you're ready to apply to medical school, you'll see that the application process encompasses a lot of different things from choosing which schools to apply to, preparing for the MCAT exam, deciding if the preview exam is right for you, filling out your medical school applications, and covering expenses related to the application process. The process of applying to medical school has a financial component. AMCAS, MCAT, Preview, and MSAR have a cost associated with them. However, the AAMC firmly believes that the cost of applying to medical school should not deter you from becoming a doctor, so we created the Fee Assistance Program. Before registering for your MCAT exam, preview exam, or applying to medical school, we strongly encourage you to explore the AAMC's fee assistance program. This program assists those who, without financial assistance, would be unable to take the MCAT exam, preview exam, apply to medical schools with the AMCAS application, or use some of the other AAMC resources. Please note, that the benefits of this program are not retroactive. There are several benefits with the fee assistance program, and they include reduced MCAT fees, reduced preview exam fees, free MCAT prep materials, free subscription to the medical school admissions requirements, a waiver for the cost of the AMCAS application and AMCAS fees, for up to 20 medical school designations. Additionally, if you are planning to apply for MCAT testing accommodations, you will have access to a stipend for an updated psychoeducational or medical evaluation if necessary. If you were to use all the benefits available to you with the Fee Assistance Program Award, you would save more than $2,000. To be eligible for the fee assistance program, you must be a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, a lawful permanent resident, LPR of the United States, a green card holder, or have been granted refugee or asylum or deferred action for childhood arrivals, DACA status by the U.S. government. 
Approval for the fee assistance program is tied directly to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services poverty level guidelines. Unlike some federally funded programs, the fee assistance program does not draw distinctions based on your dependent or independent tax status. Therefore, parental financial information and supporting tax documentation are required. It's free to apply for this program, so we encourage you to do so. The MCAT exam is a standardized computer-based multiple choice exam taken at a testing center. All U.S. and many Canadian medical schools require MCAT scores for regular admission to medical school. The exam tests you on the knowledge and required skills medical school students, faculty, and residents have identified as key prerequisites for success in medical school and the practice of medicine. It specifically assesses your problem solving and critical thinking skills, as well as your knowledge of scientific concepts and principles necessary to the study of medicine. The content on the MCAT exam is divided into four multiple choice sections. There is no writing section on the exam. The four sections include two natural sciences sections, a behavioral and social sciences section, a critical analysis section. The sections test content found in introductory biology, physics, psychology, and sociology, in addition to introductory general and organic chemistry and first semester biochemistry. The exam takes about seven and a half hours to complete, which includes everything from checking out to taking breaks. MCAT scores are released 30 to 35 days after you take your exam. You will receive five scores, four individual section scores, and one total score. Your section scores will be added together to create your total score. The range for each section and the total score are listed here. When is the right time to take the MCAT exam? When you are ready. Here are a few questions to think about to help you determine when you might be ready. When do you want to apply to medical school? Many examinees take their MCAT exam in the same year that they are also applying to medical school. Are you familiar with MCAT content and do you understand it and feel comfortable with the content? The MCAT exam doesn't have any required course you need to take before registering, but if you feel you need more time to prepare based on what is tested on the exam, consider a date later in the testing year. Will you need to retake the exam? No one likes thinking about that, but if you think you will have to test more than once during a calendar year, think about making your first attempt early in the year. This allows you time to receive your scores, decide on whether to retest or not, and then find an available seat later in the testing year. A few other things to keep in mind, there are a limited number of times you can take the exam. In a single testing year, you are only permitted to take the exam three times. Over two consecutive testing years, you can only test four times. In a lifetime, you are permitted to take the exam a total of seven times. One way to help you get started in your preparation is to create a study plan that keeps you on track and organized. The AAMC has a free six-step guide to help you do just that. This guide includes worksheets and suggested resources to help you throughout your preparation. It also includes some suggestions of study strategies you can begin to employ now and throughout your preparation. It can also be helpful to see how others tackle the exam. We developed a resource that highlights 21 different past examinees study schedules, strategies, and tips for how they prepared and what they learned. Further, 
we have other resources and practice products to help you throughout this process. Here, you can see some of the resources the AAMC makes available, either free or low cost. These include study resources, such as the Khan Academy MCAT collection and practice sets, full length exams, and inspiring stories. Next, let's explore our accommodations process. The AAMC is committed to providing all individuals with opportunities to demonstrate their proficiency on the MCAT exam. That includes ensuring access to persons with disabilities in accordance with relevant law. If you are a student who has a disability or medical condition that they believe requires an adjustment to standard testing conditions, we encourage the student to apply for testing accommodations. A decision on most requests will be made within 60 days of receipt of a complete application. There is lots of good information on the MCAT website around application timeframes and types, application requirements, how to apply, and what to do once students receive their decisions. Our online system, the MCAT Accommodations Online, also known as MAO, provides a secure online method for submitting applications and supporting documentation. The system also maintains a record of decision letters and provides our review cycle dates and other important deadlines. A link to MAO can be found on our website. Please pay close attention to the application submission dates for your preferred test date so you can receive a determination in time for your exam. To provide even better care for patients, the next generation of doctors must understand far more than chemistry and human anatomy. They will need to provide compassionate care that nurtures their patient's mind and body, collaborate effectively with multidisciplinary medical teams, and navigate emotional, cultural, and ethical challenges with resiliency. The AAMC designed the preview exam to look beyond academic metrics to assess core personal skills, such as resilience, service orientation, ethics, and teamwork. When combined with other parts of the admissions process, preview scores provide medical school staff with a more complete view of an applicant. The preview exam is designed to measure examinees' understanding of effective professional behaviors across nine of the AAMC's core competencies for entering medical school students, represented here in this image. As a product of its design, the preview score is an evaluation of these competencies. It cannot tell us exactly how a person will behave in a specific context, but rather information about the extent to which they know whether behaviors are effective or ineffective. It reflects someone's potential or capacity to learn and develop in these competency areas, which is a necessary precursor to engaging in effective behavior. The AAMC preview exam was designed with all applicants in mind. The exam takes approximately 75 minutes to complete and offers the convenience of testing at a location of your choosing, such as your home or a local library, while maintaining a high level of security with live remote human proctoring. This also means that you will be able to contact someone in a timely manner and receive immediate support to minimize disruptions to exam completion. The AAMC preview exam can only be taken on a desktop or laptop. It cannot be completed on a cell phone or tablet. Please verify that your device and workspace meets the workspace and computer requirements prior to taking the exam. We also recommend downloading the Guardian web browser to access your live remote exam proctor prior to your scheduled exam date. It is also important to have permissions on your device and network to adjust the security settings to allow the proctor to observe your exam. 
there is a flat fee for AAMC preview examinees, which includes unlimited score distribution to participating schools. Additionally, examinees approved to receive AAMC fee assistance program benefits will pay $0 for the first preview registration and will receive a 50% discount for subsequent registrations, including if you did not attend your scheduled exam, no show. Additionally, the fee assistance benefits include a 50% discount for rescheduling fees. New this year, all American Medical College application program participating medical schools are invited to use the AAMC preview professional readiness exam in their admissions process. MD granting schools can choose how they will consider preview scores in their application review, require, recommend, or accept for research only. This information will be available on their medical school admission requirements profiles and the AMCAS application. Please refer to these resources or contact the schools directly to learn more about their use of preview scores. Note, not all MD granting schools have adopted use of the preview exam. Currently, the Des Moines University Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine program recommends the preview exam for all applicants. You will have the option to select this program to receive your scores when you take the exam. Additional DO granting medical programs are considering but have not yet adopted the preview exam. The preview exam will be offered for seven testing windows beginning in March and concluding in September. Score reports will be released approximately 30 days following each testing window. You will receive your scores on the same day as they are released to the schools. We are continuing to provide students with free preparation resources. These include an examinee preparation guide, as well as a practice exam booklet. The preparation guide provides preparation advice and strategies for completing the preview exam. Our practice exam booklet includes a full length practice exam with scoring key and rationales for all items. This is intended to help examinees become familiar with the format of the exam, types of scenarios used to evaluate their understanding of the pre-professional competencies and process for evaluating responses. We encourage you to review the prepare for the AAMC preview exam page to locate these resources and check this page regularly for updates to our suite of preview prep materials. Now let's take a moment to see what one physician has said about the application process. Like many applicants, Rose worried about not having a perfect grade point average or particularly high MCAT scores, but she said, during my interviews, no one asked me about my unbalanced MCAT score or the C grades in my transcript. They were more interested in learning about my strengths and the strategies that I used for overcoming challenges. Her advice for applicants is to choose schools with missions that align with your own. My school is focused on rural, underserved communities, and that resonated for me. Every medical school is different, and on average, applicants will apply to about 17 medical schools. But with so many different programs to choose from, how do you determine where to apply? Keep in mind that just like every applicant is different and has their own story and experiences, each medical school is different and has its own mission and culture. You can view each medical school's mission statement and a ton of other information for free within the AAMC Medical School Admissions Requirements, which describes the medical school's teaching philosophy, core values, and what they are looking for in their applicants. 
it can be helpful to think about what you are looking for in terms of your own goals and values, and do they align with the medical schools? The medical school admission requirements resources can help you prepare for the application process and choose where to apply. When you get to the point where you are making your decisions about where to apply, it can be tempting to focus only on academic requirements and medical school statistics. But remember, this is where you will spend at least four years and there are a lot of factors to consider. With the MSAR tool, you can search for schools by location, median MCAT score or GPA, and then review school specific data, save and rank favorites, save notes on each school, and review pre-medical coursework. Subscribers can view complete school data, including things like student data, volunteer experiences, and median MCAT scores. You can even compare medical schools side by side. The Official Guide to Medical School Admissions is a chapter guidebook which outlines the admissions process, but also highlights other things like medical career options, how to prepare for medical school, what medical students study, and how admissions decisions are made. We often recommend looking into this resource early in your process to get a handle on what's involved and develop your own application timeline. It includes access to PDF worksheets too. You can find this and all other MSAR resources online at aamc.org backslash MSAR. Deirdre Good from the University of Virginia School of Medicine says, you don't have to be a perfect applicant in every category, but the personal statement is very important. You've taken your prerequisites, gotten your experience, and now you're ready to apply with the AMCAS system and plan for paying for medical school. Here's what you need to know. The AMCAS program is a little like the common app many of you used when applying to college. You will complete one application. The AMCAS program will verify and process your submitted application and then send it to your designated medical schools electronically. The AMCAS program also distributes your letters of evaluation and your MCAT scores directly to the medical schools. Here's a look at the typical application timeline, which we refer to as the AMCAS application cycle. The AMCAS cycle is one year ahead of the current calendar year. It's offset like this because the application cycle corresponds to when you hope to start medical school. The AMCAS cycle starts in May every year. Medical schools won't begin receiving processed applications until late June. Once your processed application is sent, medical schools will begin their review process, which usually involves secondary applications and in-person interviews. Keep in mind, medical school admissions are rolling, so submitting your materials earlier rather than later is a good idea. You will need to keep track of the medical school's AMCAS application deadlines as this is the date your application needs to be submitted. Official transcripts must be received by the AMCAS program within 14 calendar days from a medical school deadline. These deadlines are detailed in the medical school section of the application as well as on our website. The information requested of you in the AMCAS application is relatively straightforward. However, it's very detailed, so know that completing your AMCAS application will take time. The AMCAS application has nine sections listed here, and again, asks for a range of information about yourself. Some sections are self-explanatory, but those highlighted in green require a bit more time and thought. In the coursework section, you'll enter every college level course you have attempted or completed. 
an official transcript is required from each post-secondary institution in the U.S. and Canada. Also, requesting an official transcript for yourself is helpful when completing this section. The work and activities is designed to give you the opportunity to highlight your work experience, extracurricular activities, awards, honors, or publications. You may add up to 15 entries in this section and can select up to three experiences as the most meaningful, which you'll be asked to reflect on in writing. Your personal comments essay or your personal statement will also take some time to draft and finalize. As Deirdre pointed out, this is an important part of the application process because it is really your first chance to convey to medical schools why medicine. But remember, there isn't a formula for your essay or a right way to craft it. It should be unique to you and your story. We have guides and video tutorials on our website, a YouTube channel, an applicant guide, and lots of FAQs to help you navigate the application. We also have a fantastic contact center who are available to answer your questions about the AMCAS program and the MCAT exam. Deepika Gower, Rush Medical College of Rush University provides some good financial tips her personal recommendations for managing finances are, get to know your school's financial aid team. Be proactive in getting all your questions answered. Financial aid counselors are there to help guide you. Track your expenses. It's a vital life skill that will serve you well in the future. Know what you borrowed and who you borrowed from. It sounds basic, but it's essential to know this for repayment. In addition to following Deepika's advice, I okay, I see the video stop there. I do have a little backup here. It's just about at the end. Give me just one moment. Thank you for all the questions coming in as well. Um, yeah, everyone, write in the chat. Are you enjoying this webinar? Are you getting some valuable information? We have over 250 questions in the Q&A and 55 are answered so far. Hopefully this is very helpful. And we are st we still have another about 20 minutes to go of the typed. And then also we're going to be doing questions out loud as well in a few minutes. So get your you with. And we're, we're going to fix up the video here, and then we'll get into the live question and answer portion in a few as well. Keep asking those questions in the Q&A, and we'll be on. All right. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. Tools, tips, and information that will help you borrow wisely, and when it comes time, repay your loans responsibly. First can help you understand the financial aid process, manage your finances during medical school, and learn about loan repayment options. Some of the things that you will find when you visit the FIRST website are fact sheets, which are short articles that cover sometimes difficult to understand topics, videos and webinars that talk about ways to pay for medical school and how to repay federal student loans, first resources, which include repayment charts, timelines, budgeting worksheets, and tip cards. And lastly, there's a tool called Med Loans Organizer and Calculator that lets you organize your student loans and run repayment scenarios. One of the ways to help minimize your financial stress is to learn as much as possible about student aid and funding options. From the first homepage, you'll want to use the search first button, which is a separate search tool from the main website. 
This search tool specifically searches for FIRST's financial resources. You can search by audience like pre-med or resident, by topic like financial aid and managing money, or even by using your own word search. In addition to all of the helpful financial aid information on FIRST, you will also find the Financial Wellness Program. This financial literacy program provides information that all consumers need to know about various financial topics like budgeting, credit, taxes, insurance, and so much more. There are many different places you can get information to support you on your pathway to medical school. The AAMC is supporting all aspiring physicians and advisors by switching to digitally focused channels. The pre-med resources webpage is one of our most useful digital tools. The pre-med resources collection includes various links throughout the AAMC's student and resident hub for easy navigation, as well as print friendly handouts of all items normally distributed at pre-med events. The page was designed to mirror the applying to medical school journey, making it more accessible to applicants and advisors looking for information. The Integrated Learner Services team collaborates directly with learners like you. We host regular engagement activities that allow us to learn more about your experiences along the medical education journey. When learners like you provide input, it gives us direct insight into what you are experiencing and how we can best support you. One of the many ways we can support you is by creating a student and resident website that gives you pertinent information at the time you need it in a reliable and accessible way. All of the resources mentioned reside on the AAMC student and resident website. This website is a great starting point no matter which phase of your journey you are in. You can always search for information or use the menu to navigate to topics you want to learn more about. I know we gave you a lot of website links and you may not have had time to jot them all down. So if you want, you can take a screenshot or photo of this slide. It has all of the websites in one place. As we wrap up this presentation, we encourage you to follow us on Facebook and X for more information, as well as tools, tips, and quick answers to your questions. Also, be sure to visit the AAMC student website for all the resources mentioned during this presentation and much more. Kate, what a presentation. I know we still have about 15 minutes and I know a lot of people are asking a lot of questions right now, but something I'm seeing right now is people are saying, wait, I missed it. I didn't have time to take that screenshot. Um, could we either go back to that slide or we'll also send out all this information, but let, let, let's go back to it so everyone can take that screenshot, if that's okay. Sure. Is that right. possible? A moment. Okay, because I know that was a lot of information, but it's a lot of excellent information for everybody applying. Yes. Want to learn open activities, go up to the answer, as well as tools, tips, and all right. There we go. Okay, so everyone should screenshot this right here. Take a picture on your phone. It has all of the resources that uh, were discussed in the video. Um, make sure it's all good and not blurry there we go yeah um and i'm i've been steadily answering questions in the chat that includes a lot of these links as well or excuse me not the chat q a um <laughs> i can also put these links into the chat directly um so you can have them there as well just click on them okay perfect so we'll keep this good. up for another like 10 20 seconds and then we're gonna do more of the q a but now we're gonna do it out loud because there's a lot of questions too. There's, you know, there's almost 300 in the chat and, and we can't get to all of them, obviously. So we're going to cover a lot of the 
um, the general themes that we saw. So there are a lot of resources that you talked about, Kate, in this video. And for everybody asking, this will be this is being recorded. It's going to be emailed to everybody who registered. It's going to be posted. You will have access to this video. So if you miss things while you were taking notes, it's here. You're going to have it. Um, one of the questions that came up a lot that we've noticed here is about timelines for a lot of things, whether that's timeline of when to take preview or MCAT or when to apply. Kate, can you talk a little bit more about timeline for a variety of things? Up to you completely on how you answer that question. Yes, so definitely the timeline for everything um, is very dependent on the school that you're looking at, the program that you're interested in, um, is, and that's as far as the application. Um, timeline to when you should take the MCAT exam and when you should take the preview exam is when you feel prepared to take those exams. Um, the prep for those is significant and you should take the time to do it. Um, we have practice exams on our website for both MCAT and preview. We also uh, give you access to Khan Academy if you're accepted to the fee assistance program, um, which also has study guides in there and uh, practice exams. I believe there's four full length practice exams. Um, so definitely take advantage of those resources. Um, you can also check out uh, the MSAR, the Medical School Admissions Requirements. Um, with the fee assistance program, you do get, I believe, a 15% discount on the subscription. Um, and that website has a wealth of information um, about different schools um, and their programs, what they require. You can compare and contrast information. Um, you can look up specific uh, things like MCAT, uh, median MCAT scores. Um, if they require the preview exam, I did see some questions in there about that preview exam specifically. Um, not all schools require it. You will have to check the website to see if the school that you are interested in requires or recommends the preview exam. Um, if they do not, you'll know by looking at the website. Um, and as far as any opportunities you can do during the summer, um, as in the video, the SHPP program, summer, uh, summer health professions enrichment program um, uh, has opportunities if you have under 60 credits. Um, I do not believe that AP credits in high school count against that. Um, and it has to be at the time of application. So when you apply in November up to February 1st, you must have less than 60 credits. But if you do not apply or excuse me, if you don't qualify for that, we do also have just summer enrichment opportunities available in general. Um, and you can get that information by searching for summer programs on our website. Perfect. Awesome. And could you also recap a little bit more about the fee assistance program? Because like you said, right, some of these things are are paid, right? You have for the preview exam, for applying to medical school, for registering for the MCAT. So with the fee assistance program, could you just talk a little bit more about how that works, how people can apply and who qualifies for it? Sure. So the fee assistance program, the first thing I want to mention, which was also mentioned in the video, is that it is not retroactive. The benefits of this are not retroactive. If you have begun the process, if you have registered for the MCAT exam, if you've gotten your study guides, you cannot then apply uh, the benefits of the fee assistance program to um, those things that you've already paid for. It will only be from the point you are accepted going forward. So to apply, you go on the website, um, and you'll know within five days, five business days, if you're accepted, most people find out in two. Um, you also have the opportunity to look at the guidelines on our website for what, um, what, what the requirements are of the fee assistance program. Um, they include having a US-based address. Um, it also goes by the federal poverty guidelines, which the AAMC does not determine. Um, so they will need your parental information uh, tax information if you are under 26. If you're over 26, it's all on you. If you're about to turn 26, I recommend you wait. Um, and the benefits themselves are uh, active from the day you are accepted until December of the following year. So I put it in the, the Q&A for someone, um, but just as an and example. And we're getting in the, Q the chat here about the who is eligible. We're getting links here. Um, being sent. So everyone who's interested, the links are in the chat right now and from that screenshot as well. And just to reiterate again, like this will all be posted. You will have these resources available tomorrow in your email. We'll all be summarizing this. Um, another question, Kate, was about the MCAT because some people are asking, you know, do you want to apply to medical school if you're still taking the MCAT maybe this summer? Or what's the timeline look like in terms of taking the MCAT? 
having a score ready and then applying? Like, what would you recommend for that process? So you can apply uh, and submit your MCAS application uh, before you get your MCAT scores. Um, however, I recommend knowing what your score is first so that you will know if you need to retake the exam. Um, and just so you also know, uh, schools get all your MCAT scores. So every attempt that you make, they will see all of them. Got it. Okay, so they'll see all the attempts for your MCAT, they'll see your scores, and you're recommending that it'd be helpful to know your score as you're applying to medical school too. That can help sort of the school list and things. What about when, when asking about specific pieces of information that a medical school might need, where can students find information about the requirements that each medical school has? You can look on the MSAR. So okay. like I said, uh, if you get the fee assistance, I believe there's a discount for it. Um, and it has information on there about, like I said, MCAT scores, median MCAT scores, um, the location that the school is at, it kind of gives you information about that because, you know, you're going to be spending a significant amount of time there. You want to make sure you like where you're at. Um, so I would, I would definitely look into that. And of course, obviously the school's website itself. Perfect. There were additional questions in the Q&A, just about a variety of different individualized topics. I know every person's individual story is different and everyone's situation is different. If you had to give a broad overview of kind of the process, you had some slides about this in your video, but when somebody's thinking about applying to medical school, right, there's a lot that's involved and just so much that was even mentioned in the video. Mm -hmm. How do you sort of distill that down into the big major pieces making sure somebody does X, then Y, then Z, and whatever order. What would you sort of say from that perspective? How should somebody be thinking about the timing of their application and making sure they have everything ready? Um, well, as you're going through your, your medical education, excuse me, your education before you get to medical school, uh, you're going to want to focus on what your work and activities are and be writing those down constantly. Um, if, if you are doing a volunteer position over the summer and there's a title, associated with it and you don't necessarily have set tasks, um, you're going to want to write that down because you might not remember in four years or three years or whatever it is. Um, you also want to make sure that you are keeping track of what your coursework is. And um, when it comes to your personal essay, that is something you want to take a lot of time with. Um, there are several um, guides on our website that you can you can go by. You should talk to your pre-health advisor. You should revise and edit it. I, I strongly suggest taking the time to do that. Um, but in order to do any of this, you have to start with a plan. You have to make a plan for yourself. Remember to be flexible, but you have to have a study plan and you have to let the people in your life know that this is your plan. <laughs> so you're not getting these last minute requests and feeling FOMO, like you have a goal, stick to it. Um, it, it seems like it's a lot when it's in front of you, but when it's behind you, it's it seems like a breeze, honestly. So um, yeah, I really suggest making that plan for yourself, sticking to it, and then going on and keeping these details about work and activities that you've done, um, keeping uh, track of the coursework that you've, you've accomplished, and um, spending as much time as you can on your AMCAS essay. And also note that in the, um, in the actual AMCAS service, you're not able to edit. Um, so make sure that you have everything formatted the way that you want it before you um, send it off. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of kind of requirements in the sense of there's the pre med required courses, there's the MCAT, there's the preview exam for many medical schools, um, there's the actual AMCAS application, and that includes letters of recommendation, work and clinical experiences, any research or shadowing that you might have had, clinical experiences. I saw some questions about clinical experiences specifically. Are there any sort of experiences that? you have seen come up commonly in terms of how people get exposure to the field of medicine, things that you would recommend for people who are maybe looking to get more clinical experience? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's EMTs, uh, medical scribe, CNA, um, uh, community clinic volunteers, um, any clinical research, shadowing. That's typically what I've seen or right. heard that people have done. Um, I can put some links in the chat also to kind of give and you, give you an idea of what others have done. We do also have that information on our website, especially if you check the anatomy of an ap applicant. Okay, great. And so the key with the clinical experience is that it really should be clinical, right? It should be working with patients. It should be seeing what physicians do or seeing the healthcare environment. That's actually the way that I got most of my clinical experience when I was applying to medical school. 
I had volunteered and then worked as an EMT. And that is what exposed me to the world of medicine and taking care of people. And so with that, that's what I talked about a lot about when I was applying. Um, so having that clinical experience really allows you to see what being, you know, in the healthcare field is like. And then specifically about seeing what being a physician is like, that's what the shadowing is for, right? Yes. There's real shadowing, there's in-person in shadowing. What would you recommend when it comes to shadowing and making sure somebody really knows that they do want to be a physician and they've seen doctors working in action? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, so like, what would you recommend for somebody who's interested in shadowing? Do you recommend mm -hmm. they go to you know one particular doctor or a variety of different specialties or is there virtual shadowing that would be acceptable too in certain situations? Um, as far as virtual shadowing, that would also depend on the schools that you're looking at and what they would need, which I recommend the MSAR for. Um, but as far as how many they should shadow with and what kind of um, what kind of specialties they should shadow in, that's really dependent on your choices. Um, sometimes people have someone that they've, they've you know, picked out and they, they know they want to study with this person, they want to be with this person. That's great. It's also okay if you have two or three. Um, I wouldn't go any more than that. Um, just because it can get overwhelming with all the, the different things that you do. Um, but uh, as long as you clearly can represent that on your application, that, that is going to be a great asset to you. Absolutely. Something you touched upon as well in the, in the presentation was potentially having to retake the MCAT again and also potentially reapplying to medical school again. And with that do you have recommendations for somebody who might have taken the MCAT one time, didn't get really a score that they were, you know, happy with, want to retake the exam? What recommendations would you have for maybe timing of that or overall just how to do better the next attempt? Sure. Well, first, you should know a lot of people do have to retake their MCAT exam. There's no shame in that. Um, and if you make that study plan, um, and you take the time to kind of recover from what you just went through, because it's a long exam. Um, and you, you make sure that you have that plan set for yourself. Um, I recommend making sure that you can take your exam, either your first exam at the beginning of the season, and that will leave you time to retake it at the end of the season if you should choose to do that. Um, if you've already taken the MCAT exam and, and you weren't happy with your score, yes, I would absolutely retake it again, but I would definitely have that plan set in place um, and have people around me that can support me in that, um, that retaking of the exam for sure. Awesome. And we have about one minute left of the presentation. We want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, this will all be recorded. This is all being recorded. It's going to be sent to your emails tomorrow. We'll also have it summarized in a blog post with all of the links and all of the wonderful information that Kate helped share on behalf of the double AMC. Um, this was an awesome presentation. And the fact that so many of you were here tonight on a Wednesday night learning about how to become physicians is very inspiring. And it makes me excited for the future of medicine. Kate, with one minute left, do you have any sort of last minute advice, anything else you'd like to say to everybody who's on tonight? Yeah, absolutely. First, uh, thank you again for coming tonight. Um, showing up is really important and you've done that. I recommend next that you sign up for our pre-med navigator. It's a once a month newsletter. that has information in there about deadlines. There's also personal stories. Um, and it's a really invaluable resource. So if you visit doubleamc.org backslash premed navigator, you can sign up there. Thanks again. Perfect. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Kate, so much for joining us, for sharing these wonderful resources. And for everybody who was on tonight, I'm sure you will all make phenomenal physicians. And I wish you all the best of luck. Have a good night.